Um, we've been we've been talking about something that you know I introduced last time, reminding us that we're dealing with these uh, homomorphisms uh, that are the morphisms in broader so-called co-prefeed categories. Yeah. Oh, this thing here? No, no, no. Um, our main participants. This and bots. Bots that that are our main and your feature. Okay, I don't I don't see that on my screen. When we when we so do you see this on your screen? I don't, I don't see it. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, so we're we're dealing with uh we've been dealing with these different types of um of C sets of these co pre sheets, which involve a schema category, like here's the schema category for graphs, right? Um, and we had a different schema category for discrete dynamical systems. Remember those? And we were looking at mappings from the schema categories into set, right? And uh, we noted briefly, and I'm going to expand upon this a bit today, that um, each such so-called instance of a C set, a map, a functor from one of these schemas to set, um, delineate a sort of categorical database. Mm -hmm. um, where for each object, we had sort of a table in that categorical database for each morphism out of that object, including um, like source or target here. Uh, we had a, so we could think of um, uh, there's being a table, each row of the table is a value of uh, associated with the object when it maps over to set. So E maps to a set, right? A set of edges, right? And each row of that table is associated with a particular edge. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the primary key given kind of by this IDE. And, um, and uh, within that table, it has columns for each outgoing arrow, like source and for target. Um, and each of them is going to be a foreign key into the table associated with their codomain here, V, right? Because these go to V. From E to V, so so um, in each row, the B each row associated with an edge, there'd be something that's saying for what vertex uh, the source is, or for what vertex the, the target um, is pointed, and then there's a table for V as well, right? Um, and um, we've seen these uh, things, and uh, you may recall that we had these. Cat lab code. Um, and why aren't I seeing it here? Um, so where where is where did my code go? Okay. Um I had uh okay, here it is somehow it was hidden off to the side. Um okay, um see so recall like for graph homomorphisms, we have this graph schema, right? Um this is just this this schema. Um, uh, here, oh, edge and source and target, we don't show by convention arrows, and we define these, these uh, particular instances of it, which are func particular functors from this over into set, right? Um, so that it maps edge to a particular set of edges, V to a particular set of vertices, um, source to a mapping from the set of edges to the set of vertices over and set, and the same thing with target, right? Identity. So what's that? Identity. Yeah, um, yeah, and it maps identity to identity, and because it's a functor, it maps composition to composition as well. And any given uh, a graph is represented in this sort of database, right? And so we see one here. Um, that I think we built up together. So here we have a graph with three vertices, three edges, and source says for edge one, 
uh, its vertex, its source vertex is one, and its target vertex is two. It's it, for edge two. Its source vertex is 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 two, and its target vertex is three. And the final one is from three to three, right? And we could do a uh, to graph this of this, having defined it, and we'd see something like this, right? So this is our categorical encoding. You notice that V is not displayed here because all it has is the primary key. That's because reflects the fact that there's no morphism out of this other than identity. And the identity corresponds to the primary key. This is kind of like the primary key here uh, associated with E. So kind of from the identity. Because it doesn't have anything else, it is not shown. Mm -hmm. Are we okay with that? Um, okay. So this is like our database encoding of a given C set instance, right? A given C set, a given instance of this schema, GR, right? And we had a similar thing um, for discrete dynamical systems, right? Um, so with discrete dynamical systems, um, we also had uh, a an encoding here, um, and we're gonna go down here, but we have an encoding of a, so this is our, our uh, schema for discrete dynamical systems. It looked like this, and any given particular dynamical system whose evolution we might depict this way as a finite state automaton, deterministic, finite states, um, we can encode it uh, as having, okay, a set of states and a function that maps from that set of states to the next state. And because this is functorial, it maps compositions here, next after next, next after next after next, into compositions here uh, associated with um, successive applications of this update function, this next one. Are we comfortable with that? Mm. Having done that, we then real we then reasoned about homomorphisms between it, right? Now, um, this is getting closer to what I want to focus on today, but graph homomorphisms, we learn to think of them as characterizing mappings from one graph to another, right? So we might, for example, ask about how does this, how does this graph, you know, how, how many structure preserving mappings does it have? Not any mapping, not any scrambled mapping, but how many structure preserving mappings does it have uh, onto this graph here, right? Um, how many mappings does it have where when we map an edge, it goes to an edge in the target, which is from the mapping of the course, it goes from the mapping of the source vertex to the mapping of the target vertex. Remember that? And we argued that there's a naturality square that applied here. Um, so when we have this, you know, if we consider um, one encoding of the graph uh, where we have uh, a, um, where we map things over here to, so this is one graph. This is a C set describing this graph. So we have a single edge, that's this one. And we have two vertices, that's these two, right? And we argued that there's this naturality square when we think about mapping that onto another graph. So this is the other graph, right? Three edges, right? two vertices, or sorry, three, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, three vertices, one, two, three, right? Three edges, one, two, three. Um, and, and we argued that this is a homomorphism by virtue of the fact that this naturality square commutes for each and every morphism here, this naturality square commutes. That is, if we go around it, this way, it's the same as going around it this other way, right? And so we could either, if we're at a given vertex, 
we can either say one, uh, excuse me, if we're at a given edge, we can either map that edge over. So one, say map to map to uh, three here, and then, then ask, well, what is its target? Its target is three, but that has to be the same as starting up here with this edge, asking about its target and 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 asking where does that match to three, right? And the same, natu this naturality square has to hold for all morphisms in the source category. So it has to hold for source as well, right? So it has to be that if we have an edge here and we map it over and ask for the source of the resulting, you know, so now we have an edge over here. We ask for the source of that. It's the same as if we asked about its source here and mapped it over. We good with that? That was the flavor of homomorphisms here, right? Kind of a sensible thing that edges and the mappings of edges and and vertices have to cohere. Remember that? Um, and that gave us a whole category of, of graphs, right? Um, where each of these dots is a particular graph and the edges are morphisms between them, which are homomorphisms. And this is generally the thing in category theory. When we have a diagram, it's very common that we have objects and the morphisms are homomorphisms between those objects. They're structure preserving mappings there. And that's the case here. You see it as this isn't any old slapping, scrambling from one from one graph to another. It's it's a structure preserving. It's a, a way of mapping, right? It's it's a way of mapping this down to that that's consistent in how it maps the vertices and how it maps the edges, right? So the fact that B and C map down to capital B here means that, you know, this edge from capital A, which used to go to C, now has to go to this, this one here, right? So it, it all sticks together. It's natural. It's it's comfortable. And hopefully you, you have that sense being a well-behaved. It, it behaves nicely with this mapping. Um, so we kind of learned, you know, how to reason about this, right? You could have kind of these map, it could map down to there, or it could map down to this one, or it could map down to, uh, no, I lost it, um, map down uh, to, uh, to this, you know, map to this one, right? We kind of learned to reason visually about what those homomorphisms look like, um, but those gave us this big category, right? And what we're going to be coming to Thursday is taking products in this category, taking asking about the initial object, taking the terminal object, but taking uh, co-products and these because these are morphisms. Then we build these universal constructions with universal properties through like cat labs categorical algebra in a category like this. But we did this not just for graphs, right? We did it for dynamical systems. And we saw that it, that same flavor throughout of naturality, you know, if we had a natural if we had a dynamical system with four states and another one with two states, right? Um, and we considered now we have just one morphism over here, right? We have we have this is our uh, is our uh, category here. And there's only one generating, not sort of uh, morphism, non-identity generating morphism next. And so for next year, for the naturality condition, we have to either be able to start with a state, then map it over here. So let's start with state one, map it over here to state well, one goes to A, and then do next, apply next for this diagram, and we get B, and that has to be the same as doing what? You tell me. That has to be the same as doing what? Exactly. Doing this and then mapping over. it For them to be consistent, for it to be well-behaved, those have to give the same thing, right? If we want to say that we kind of 
had a structure preserving map. We mapped it into this in a way that kept its structure, retained its structure. Maybe it coarse grained it. Maybe it glommed some things together, two and four to B, one and three to B, one and four to A, but it retained the behavior, the essential behavior in light of that glomming, right? That's what we've achieved. Once again, it's kind of like we found a, a way to find this in here, kind of like we found this, uh, this, this um, graph in this one, right? We kind of located it, we embedded it in there, we found, uh, you know, cases where it's embedded in this other thing. Um, you could think of it as as doing a similar thing here. We find it is kind of um, this inside of it. It may be glommed together, certain distinctions are collapsed. Maybe there's a lot of other structure, but we found a way to do it in a way that preserves the essential structure, which is the update relationship. Are we comfortable with that? And we said because of the functor, you know, it, doing next, next, next here is guaranteed to be um, just a, a repetition of, of uh, next, next, next over, over in, our, in our target, okay? Um, okay, um, now this also led to a category, right? Where we have, this is another CSET category, another co-pre-sheet category or informally a, a, a pre-sheet category where once again, we're gonna have initial objects and terminal objects and products and co-products and, and as we'll see, push, pullbacks and pushouts and exponential objects and, and all these wonderful categorical gadgets that we can do things with with categorical. That's where we're going on, on, on Thursday. But let's see some other examples of these sort of C sets and homomorphisms that are closer to what we'll be working with. Are we good with this? Okay, so we're, we're getting warmed up and I'd like to open up now one of the things I posted to the, to the Moodle, to the Moodle site, to the Canvas site. Here we go. Here, it's called agent-like schema homomorphisms, right? Okay, okay, so I'm opening it up and I've got it running in my Docker container, right? I connected to it with this and it went and opened it up. Um, have it reached there. I'm, I'm, I have this agent-like schema homomorphisms, okay? And we're gonna be following this along. Are we good with this? Okay. So this example is inspired by the sort of things we'll be working with with agent-based models. Because so much of our world there will be centering around homomorphisms, and particularly for homomorphisms for pattern finding. Mm -hmm. We're going to be reasoning about pattern finding in models. And you want to understand the flavor of homomorphisms there. So I'm going to have a schema for such a model. It's going to have service dogs. It's going to have persons. And each person is going to have an age group in a province. And a service dog will have a person who's a caregiver for it. Although I think there's a good question, who's the caregiver for whom? But each service dog is going to have a person who's its caregiver, and each person is going to have an age group, which we'll consider sort of one to three, sort of categorical, um, and they're going to have a province, okay? Uh, and, and we're going to have one to ten, right? Okay. Newfoundland, Labrador, New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, Quebec, et cetera. We good? Okay. 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 Now, um, having defined this schema, um, which which says, you know, dogs have a caregiver and persons have age groups and provinces, um, uh, we could ask to visualize the schema. And I'm going to need Xiao Yan's help here. To, can we just do two graph is, uh, two, oh gosh, two under bar graph this. Uh, and you can just do skirt, uh, 
simple mumble, um, simple ABM one, right? And we'll go see a nice pretty example of it. There we go, right? We good with this? Okay. So you could imagine this as part of an HBase model. This is very much what we're dealing with there. And then I'm going to set up a CSET type, right? Which is going to define the type associated with these mappings from this from a schema category to set. But here we're going to be dealing with this this rather evocative schema shown here. Are we good with this? Okay. I think we all like Service Dog. Well, right? Okay. Um, how could we? Do? Okay. Um, now, uh, there's there's going to be some things we're going to do here that uh, are going to have us um, build some patterns representing people with certain characteristics. Okay. And it's going to be really useful to start drawing in a notion of a representable. And I'm going to have a lecture on representables probably next within the next week, just to understand this. But for now, I'm going to ask you to sort of trust me. I'm going to build up uh, a little uh, a little um, C set that is going to kind of represent a generic person. Okay. And there's there's two ways to do it, but one of them is is using an affordance offered by by CatLab, which is to compute what's called uh, a representable. Okay, um, and here we can sort of find a generic person or a generic dog. Now the downside of this is it requires quite a bit of work. For the first time, you can hear my machine, you know, cranking cranking along. And what I really should have done is is done this one here. Um, and really, if you're gonna do this, you can do it in in one pass and then you can um, cache it. And I think it's actually caching it here now that I did it. So here I I, I said, so I'm, I'm, I'm doing this one here. You could also do it for the dog and you'll find the representable for dog is a little bit more articulated. For a person, a generic person needs to have, well, they're a person. They have one person, one age group in one province. They live in one province and they have a particular age group. Okay, that's what that kind of says. We don't know which age group it is. It's not that it's province one. No, no, no. It just means they have a specific province, not multiple ones, and they have a particular age group. The dog is going to have a caregiver, and that caregiver needs to themselves have a particular age group in province. But it doesn't, this one is not going to represent province one. It's just saying a province. Okay. We're going to come back to this. We'll explain this beautiful category theory behind representables. They're they're like a natural building block out of which functors are built. Okay. The kind of natural building blocks out of which we build up a generic C set. Okay. And by taking advantage of them, we're going to get some really neat advantages. Um, okay. But now I want to create a sample population. Okay. I'm, 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 forgive me. I'm, I'm going to do it really small. I'm going to do it with 20 people and five dogs. Okay. We go with this. Lucky and Subi and... What are the other ones, Jenna? Uh, I can't remember. Ruby? Ruby? Ruby is one. Okay, okay. Okay, so Ruby and... Ruby and Subi. Ruby and Subi, okay. Okay, so here we go. Um, We just defined this AC set. This is a particular AC set, right? It's a particular mapping from our schema, from some schema category. We saw it up there, right? This one up here to set. So there's a particular set of dogs, right? A particular set of people, a particular province that each of those people belongs to, a particular age group. How many dogs are there? There's five. There's 20 persons. There's three age groups into which we distinguish people. And there's 10 provinces. And then each age group, well, this is a mapping. Age group is a mapping from what to what in the schema? From 
H group is a morphism that goes from what to what? Here it is. It goes from person to H group. So when we map it over into set, this turns into a what? When we map a morphism in the schema to a to a set, the morphism in the schema turns into a what in set? Function. And it's going to be a function that maps from the set of people to the set of age groups. We good with that? And, and so this is the function, right? It says for each person, each of these 20 people, what their age group is, right? The first person is a young and the third person is 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 like me old codger um the 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 third person is middle age okay and same thing with province we go with this so this is the encoding now this is what the database looks like right each dog has a caregiver right um here it is here it is the database for this is the dog table of the database we go with that mm. Here's the person table. We good with that? Each person has an age group in which they reside in a province, okay? Now this one means genuinely province one. This is province seven. This is province 10, um, which might be British Columbia. But um, don't confuse that with this where we are representing a person of size one, some generic age group, some generic province okay and we're going to come back to this okay um okay now we're going to look for having defined a kind of generic person person generically we're going to find all generic people in the population mm -hmm. so the sample population is this c set this here c set is is what we're looking at here right this one we define. Is it, are we good with that? And we're going to find homomorphisms from this generic person into it, right? What is that homomorphism going to look like? Well, it's going to look it's going to look like this. I mean, it's a homomorphism. It's a it's a natural. It's a there's a naturality square for each for each morphism. So let's let's consider this, right? Let's consider this the morphisms in here. Okay, so. Um, for example, let's take uh, a morphism person. They have a province. We good with this? We good with that? This is a morphism in the schema, right? Do you, do you agree? There's a province morphism in the in the schema. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So what's the, what's going to happen? What are what are what is this and what is this? Well, F. What's F here? If, if we're considering a homomorphism from this thing here, from this, this single person, um, I'll scroll down a little bit, from single person, if we're considering a morphism from that, what is F? Well, it's, it's, it's the C set encoding this. And so FA, well, if, if we're considering province as the morphism, province goes from person right to the set of, so when we map it over to set it goes from the set of persons to the set of set of provinces right so here when it maps over this is the morphism in the schema right goes from person so a is person this is the set of persons right this is the set of provinces this is the mapping from person to province. We okay with that? Okay, what's the value of, so so when we map it over, here's person, here's province. Um, person is one here, right? Mm -hmm. um, province, one for that person. We good with that? When we go this way and map over that province um, with, the particular homomorph the particular mapping found in this naturality square um when we, this particular homomorphism has to be such that when we go this way and map over that province it has to be the same as doing what 
mapping the person over to the target and then finding the province for that. So let's think about this, okay? So what I'm saying is we're looking for homomorphisms. We're looking for matches here where if we go this way, it's the same as that one. So let's suppose we match that person to person four, let's, or, or let's mention it to person five, okay? We match it to person five. The person matches the person five. So one, person one goes into person five, right? And then we ask for their province. Mm -hmm. Then asking about in one, uh, so in this representable for person, where we have province one, that has to match, that has to map over to province seven, okay? One yeah, one to seven. So it's going to match here if we have province one matching to province seven here and person one mapping to person five here, okay? That's gonna be a consistent match. That's gonna find this representable person, this kind of generic person it's going to find it in this database if if person if it's going to find it if person is five and province is seven mm -hmm. that's going to be one homomorphism give me another one from this table give me another one that it might find it would be a valid homomorphism so i just told you one is where person one maps to person maps to five down here because this set of all people down here for this whole database goes one through 20. It could have picked one of those, but if we pick five, then, and in person five, we could see as province seven, that's consistent if this is going to province seven here, province one here, the generic province maps to seven. But give me another one. What will be another homomorphism? 18. 18, good. So person one, the generic person maps to 18 and their generic province for them maps to what? Seven as well, right? But any of these, um, generic person goes to three, the generic province maps to, to um, oh, sorry, map, generic person maps to 11 and generic province maps associated with the maps to three. Are we okay with this? Okay, so we've seen that there's a homomorphism that's elicited when we successfully sort of bind person to anything here in province to the corresponding province here. That will constitute a homomorphism where going this way, you know, asking province here, giving province one and going over has to give province one is province, you know, uh, seven um, has to be the same thing as going over here saying, well, what person one is person 18 and then going over to seven. Are we good with that? So going around this way is kind of going within this, this representable here. We, we, we find, oh, province one, what does it map to? Has to be the same as mapping this person now down to a uh, particular person here, 18, and then asking for person 18, what is their province? We, we are finding homomorphisms that map this, and it'll be any one of these here that maps there. It'll, it'll find it. It'll find that pattern there where we have consistent person in province for this. So let's, let's, let's do that. Here we are. So we're going to find all homomorphisms within that context. And there they are. There's 20 of them. Oh my goodness. Where do you think the 20 came from? Where do you think the 20 came from? Because there are 20 persons in the population, right? The first one person goes to one, their age group goes to one, and their their province goes to 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 one here the second person the person goes to eight and their province goes to eight it looks like um 
So uh, province one goes to one, province eight goes to eight, right? Let, let's go look at another. Um, person goes to 13, their province goes to three. Let's check, let's check. Person goes to 13, their province goes to three. Mm -hmm. So it, it found this pattern of a generic person in all these different places in the database because it was able to find that, oh yeah, I can make it, I can make a match here as long as um, I make alpha A a certain one mapping the person number and alpha B mapping province one to, to this. It can sort of find province one. It can match kind of, you could think of province one as they were saying, some province and it, it maps it to the appropriate province. Are we good with that idea? Let me expand upon this a little bit more, okay? Um, now you may, you're, you, you may be reeling here, but I, I just want to bring us back to the fact this isn't morally all that different from what we've been doing previously with graphs. We've been finding this graph in this one, right? We've been looking for where in this bigger graph is it found? And that's what we're doing here, right? We're, we're kind of looking for this generic person, this generic person inside of this database, right? And we're finding, oh yeah, yeah, you know, it, it like in our graphs, we, we kind of said, oh yeah, we can map one as long as one maps to three and two maps to three, right? As long as we were consistent in that, or here we can map to two, one, edge one to two, as long as we map um, vertex one to vertex two and vertex two here to vertex three. And and similarly, we're, we're doing something similar here. You know, we're, we're saying, well, we can map this generic person down to this as long as we map like person, you know, person one to 18 and person in, in province one to seven. Do you, do you kind of get that? It kind of is finding it inside of it. And this is kind of the flavor that we're getting. Okay, but now we're going to do something a little bit more interesting, if we could. So we found all persons in the population. Oh, that, that's kind of cool. But now let's do something a little bit more, more sophisticated, okay? So one thing we could do is we could say, hey, find me all people in age group three who are in province one, okay? And, and the syntax for that is here. Um, but I can I can do that and I could say, okay, people in in age group three in province one are the following. Well, there's person four. Let, let's go check, right? First of all, we'd we'd expect them to be in province one. We see it here in the homomorphism. And let's go up, okay, person four, person seven. We've taken a stand, okay. Um, person four, province one. Uh, person seven, province one. We found all the people. Uh, okay, uh, and we're we're looking for um, age group three in each case. So so again, it's saying that there's two of them: person four, person seven, or in province one in age group three. We might think this is one, but they're age group one. Okay, so we we kind of have a bit of a query here. You kind of have a query, say find, select where, uh, almost right. Um, we, now we might we might try something a little bit more interesting. Maybe we could do this, and Shayan is going to keep me on the straight and narrow as normal. Um, so Shayan, do I have to leave like a thing here? Okay. Uh, and uh, sorry. I think it's still there. It's still there. Yeah. yeah. No? no, I need to eat one. To eat one. Yeah. Okay, okay. 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 <laughs> yes. Um, okay, here I'm saying find people 
and age group three. Well, there's person two, four, seven, 10, 11, 17, 18. Those are in age group three. And casual observation suggests that looks pretty plausible. Okay. Um, so now we have kind of a, a bit of a querying thing. It's like our pattern. It's like this generic person. We can match it to these to these, this pattern to this database and extract particular rows that match it, right? But but I hope you you were convinced that there's a naturality square. We're still we're we're using homomorphisms as queries. And by the way, this is gonna those who attended the poly workshop or followed along poly, a lot of poly ideas about this idea of like query homomorphisms as queries okay but let's let's go a little bit further let's do something um a little bit interesting so yes please do you do you want this for for age for example age group three um all of age group three and all of person for one uh, no i'm asking province one. find me all people who are in age group three in province one most yeah. Country. Yeah, I'm saying find me all people in this database whose age group is one. Or sorry, okay. age group is three and province is one. And so it's kind of looking. Okay, here's here's a person age group three, but no, the province is two. Here's a person age group three. Oh, the province is one. So that 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 finds me the four here, right? Um, person four. Um, let's keep on looking. People in age group three, you know, uh, um, uh, this person's not, this person's not, uh, three, and then one, okay, seven, and indeed, that's ending. It's it's requiring both of these. No, that's not or. And yeah. those two homomorphisms make up the functor that would be attached to that piece. Is that is that how that you would describe that? That's how you would say that? Um. Okay, so so good. Though it found, good, good question. Um, it found that there are two naturality squares. There's so there there are two valid homomorphisms. There are two valid natural transformations. Yeah, from this generic person, so yeah, keep me on the straight and narrow, to, to this database, okay? Not the generic person. From the generic person okay. to this database, there are two ways in which you could have these functions. One would be you map person one to, let's take, let's take um, this, this case here, okay? One would be you map person, so so we're looking for things in H group three in province one. One would be where we map, so one natural transformation, one valid homomorphism, where we map general person, person one in that pattern to person four. And, and along with that, province one to province one here um or it could be we map person one to person seven in the in our pattern generic pattern to person seven and province one in our pattern to prov to to uh province one and those would be two that would make this commute those would be two homomorphisms that i think of them informally here as two matches mm -hmm. Just like here, we had kind of two matches of this. Or we had three matches, right? Like when we found these graph homomorphisms, we had like three matches, right? From um, the functor that encoded this graph to the functor that encoded this graph. Each of these graphs is encoded by a functor from the schema to sad. Yes. And this was encoded by some particular functor from schema to sad. That's this one. This one is encoded by some particular functor from schema to set that's associated with this one. And each of these represents for a given 
morphism here. Oh, oh sorry, for yeah, um, uh, yeah, for for represents for all morphisms, um, that that are here a consistent way of interpreting, you know, where this one goes to. Okay, so it it gives a complete natural transformation for each object here. You have one of these okay. that will make this commute for any morphism. I don't know if that's helpful, but it's like that for each map has a homomorphism yeah. between those c sets between those instances of the schema the, those particular you know um kind of uh the c sets and does that help at all maybe i'll try and explain it and uh -huh. so you can see if i'm right or sure. right. okay sure. so for the particular c set that we're talking about the one that we have those tables would be considered the function pieces right so um is that how that works? Well, and then the functor would be then comprised of all the homomorphisms, or is that like not how you talk about No, that? no, the functor here, good good question. So the functor here would be there's so so remember I'm 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 gonna try to situate us with what we did for graphs. Yeah. Remember, each of these graphs was defined by a C set, right? Yeah. And a C set is a functor from one of these into this. Yes, it, okay. Each, yeah. each graph has a particular functor. Yeah. So this is one functor, this is another. Mm -hmm. And a structure preserving mapping between functors is a natural transformation. Yeah. It yeah. kind of finds this structure in here if it can, right? Yeah. In a consistent way. And that's what's going on here in our case too. So, one functor, one one of these mappings from this schema category into set is this one right here, where it maps person to one, to a to a set of size one, um, okay. age group to a set of size one, province to a set of size one. That's one functor. Okay. That that is a C set because yeah. it's a functor from C to set from this to set. This whole thing is another C set, another functor from this schema category here into set. W what is the set mapped to in that functor? It, it, it's a C set. So it's mapping, it's a functor from this into set. What is it mapping? What set is it mapping dog to? The set of what? One, two, three, four, five. What is it mapping person to? The set of one, one to 20. What is it mapping province to? Well, there are three, there are three province, or sorry, 10 provinces. What is it mapping age group to? The age group object uh, to, to three, uh, the set of size three are one, two, three. This the province is one to 10. And then each of these morphisms, like province, mm -hmm. is going to map from this set. It's going to say for each for each person in the person set, what's its province going to be? Which particular element of the province set is it going to be? Right. Mm -hmm. So this is a C set. This 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 thing here is a C set. And it's remember a C set is like a database. So it's presenting it as a database. Are we okay with that? And just like with graphs, we were finding kind of we're finding this in this here we're doing something similar we're finding this this pattern one person who who has a specific age group that's the one in a specific pro i mean sorry who 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 some one generic person who has some generic single uh, age group and generic single province we haven't pinned down what those are where can I find it in, in this database? Well, if I restrict it to people in age group three in province one, for example, I can, I can find just two of them, person four and person seven. By contrast, if I don't, if I don't, you know, if I don't not particular about it, if I'm not specifying a particular uh, constraint there, I can find 20 of them, all 20, right? Does that make sense, Jenna? 
I think so. I'm getting there. Yeah. So we're we're finding. So it's like here. Sorry. Um. Here, what we're doing is we're we're this is generic person one. This is generic province one, and we're finding mappings from that generic person C set to this database C set, you know, okay, person one maps to to person four and province one maps to province one over here or something like that. Um that is one possible mapping um that that represents kind of a match in this. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. I, I know it takes time to to warm up. So can I can I try another one? Okay. Okay. So so this is a little bit more interesting, but maybe it will help. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Okay. Okay. Here. We're going to prepare a pattern to find pairs of people who are in the same province. Okay. We're not yet paying attention to the dogs. The dogs are going to be coming. Believe me, the dogs will be coming. But we're going to have two people. That's our pair. We're going to have a pair of people. We want a pair. Find me two people who, who, who are in the... Uh, actually, um, uh, mumble, mumble. Um, yeah, it actually... Sh sh oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, did, I, did I skip one? No. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, yeah. So here we're going to find people in the same age group in the same province. I thought I had one. Uh, um, find a pattern. Uh, I thought I had one. Oh, oh, uh, to find pairs of this thing. Okay, yeah, sorry, I skipped. Oh, yeah, I skipped that one, sorry. Okay, so this would be to define, oh, wait, how, oh, this is horrible. Find pairs of distinct people from the, what's, what is it? Same, same province, okay? So, so in our pattern, there's two separate people, okay? This is kind of, I'm, I'm trying to give you the idea here. I'm kind of glossing over a lot of particulars, but you could kind of think, okay, there, there are two people. They're, they can be in two different age groups. They don't have to be the same age group, but they share, there's only one province between them. And, and for person one, um, their age group is, is, per, is, is age group one and person two is age group is person two. The, uh, sorry, it's age group two. They don't have to be the same. We're not imposing that. But both people are in province, this some, some generic province, which one we, we're not sure yet. The homomorphism is going to find that province for these two people. But we know they share a single province. And that's why this is one. Mm -hmm. But that's why this is too, is we're not insisting they be the same age. Are we okay with this? Okay, Um. so they're from the same province and we're not paying attention to the puppies yet, the dots, okay? Can, or, or, can, we, can we try this? Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you, and, and we say, okay, this is the encoding of this. This is a CSAT. This, this here is a CSAT. The pattern, this is a really important point. The pattern is a CSAT, just, now we're going to look for that pattern in the big database, right? Just like here, the pattern was a CSET. This was encoded as a CSET, right? It was a particular graph. This, this it was called the connected pair. I called it, right? Um, this was this is a CSET, right? Graphs are CSETs, right? Graphs are are functors from schema into set. Mm -hmm. That that have a particular vertex set of vertices two here. Yeah two, and a particular set of edges, one here, and some mapping from for each edge, which it's from and which it's to, right? That that was our sort of our pattern that we were trying to find in this target, right? And, and, and we found it in different places. Just like this here, this is the pattern we want to find. Hmm? This, is, this here is the pattern we want to find in the database. Oh, can I show this? Uh, yeah, I could show it. Oh, that would be a nice idea. No, no, you have a sterling idea. 
a fine idea, a dynamite idea. Um, okay, so so we could go to graph this. And what do we have to do? It doesn't know magically how to display two elements of this thing. And, and here we go. And what we're going to see is pretty interesting. Okay. So where are the two people? You tell me. Here's person one, here's person two. And they have two different age groups, right? Those aren't constrained to be the same. But what's the same between them? Province. province. They share the same province. Mm -hmm. That's why there's only one province here. Ain't no two, two provinces. That means there's not. <laughs> there's just one province, okay? There's not two. It's just one. Are we okay with this? No, no. That was a, 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 a sterling idea, a wonderful idea, a grand idea, brilliant idea. Okay? Can we find them now? So this is our C set. This is a depiction of our C. Well, yeah, it's a depiction of it's a depiction of this in the category of elements. Okay, so it's a depiction of it where like each person is shown separately, right? Things that can be different are shown separately. There's two persons. There's two age groups. There's one province between them, literally <laughs> between them. Okay. Can we, can we try to find that? So that's our pattern. Two people. In general, it's going to be two age groups between them, but only one province between them, right? Can we try to find them in our big database? Here we go. Okay. It says person six and person 14. Okay. It's taking a stance. Let's go see. Person six and person 14 are both from province four. Mm -hmm. Um uh let's 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 look for some more. Person one and let, well, let's look at another one. Um, because we no, no, person one and person four, sure. Person one and person four both from province one. Mm -hmm. Um, and we kind of could have read that off, the truth is. We could have read it off here because it would say province four here, province one here. Okay. Um. So here we've said, find me pairs of people. That's two. It could be of any age group. We don't, we don't constrain that, but they have to be from the same province. Mm -hmm. Does the monic equals true? Does that just prevent the like swapping? It prevents it from saying, I found a pair. It's person one and person person three and person three are in the same province. It's just like, yeah. Um, Good job. Yeah, yes, yeah, exactly. Like technically, okay, I didn't tell you they have to be separate, but this this basically says like they, they need to be separate. Um, or, they, or yeah, they can't both map down to the same thing. Injecting, but technically, I, I probably don't want age group to be required to be separate. So I should have said like, what? What is it? Monic equals. So um, uh, bracket. No, but I should have done like person should be monic. Oh, so bracket person. Bra like square bracket. Yes. Okay. Okay. Like this. Uh, yeah. Um, Oh, colon, uh, colon person. Okay, that means make don't make don't select the same persons and say I found a pair. <laughs> it's Nate and Nate. Um, <laughs> you know, um, cause my wife to faint. Pair of Nates. Okay, <laughs> now we're gonna have real trouble. Um, okay. Um, yeah. Person here is my. Can the two provinces be able to map to the same province? I mean, since since in the generic, maybe represent both here. It's like there's there's two age groups, right? Two, or two age, age groups. groups. So yeah. those can be separate. Is it possible to map to the same? Yeah, and that's okay. I, I'm, I, I, what I wanted to say is 
we can have them have different age groups. They don't need to have the same age group, but I'm open to them having the same age group. In, in this one, can they also not have a dog? Because you- Yes. Okay. Yeah, but um, actually I, I probably should have drawn attention. Persons don't have to have dogs. Yeah. Dogs have, kind of have a person. They, they, yeah. they have for your person. And so here it's not getting into the dogginess yeah. yet. But if there is a person with a dog, they will be excluded from this. Though. No, so. no, they, they'd be found because this, this okay. mapping goes this way, not this okay. way. Okay. If it went this way, there'd be a big problem because we need, if there were zero dogs and 20 people, then it wouldn't make sense to say that it's not a function, right? Mm -hmm. A function needs to map each of these to a particular one here, and there's no such function. But here, dogs can claim people. <laughs> and and so there's no problem with that. We're going to come to the dogs in a minute, actually. Are, are we okay with this? Okay, now how, you tell me. Well, you tell me. Um, how would I change this? if I wanted to constrain there to be, to them also to have the same age group. So I wanna find them in the same province and of the same age group. I, I want both. What is it? Age group one. And what would age group be here? One and one, yeah. And and that's what it is down here. We don't have to do it, it's, it's down here. So now between these two people, I think of it as kind of between the two of them, there's just one age group and there's just one province. Are we good with that? And now maybe Nona has a Sterling idea. Okay. Two graph viz hmm? elements of pair of people from same age from same province. Okay. Th there's a pretty picture there. What does that picture mean? How many, how many different people are there? Two. Same. And they share the same province and they share the same particular age group. So there's only, between the two of them, there's only one province. Between the two of them, there's only one age group. Are we okay with this? So we're kind of constraining them to have the same age group, same province. Mm -hmm. It can be any province, but it has to be the same between them. Be the same age group, and that's it, it, it could be any age group, but it has to be the same between them. So, so this one doesn't mean they have to be in Newfoundland. No, no, no. It just means that there, there's some particular province between the two of them. This age group doesn't mean sorry, this age group doesn't mean they're in the, the, the youngest one. It just means between them they have one age group. Mm -hmm. And we're finding this pattern in this database, in this database here. We're finding ways to interpret, gosh, are these two people? Can we have two people? And, and, and you know, what's the homomorphism? Okay, we match these people. And then they have to have the same age group um, uh, as each other. Uh, and the same province as each other. We could work out the naturality square, but let's let's go let's go find this. Can we can we find this? Okay, there we go. Okay. Okay, sorry. Can I? Okay. Okay. Wait a minute. That was service dogs. That was we jumped ahead. I know you want to get there, but but okay. Here's the homomorphisms between these. Okay, um, there it is. So person 10 and person 20. And by the way, you notice it gave us 10 and 20 and 10 and 10 and 20. Um, look at that. Okay. Technically, that's okay. Yes. Yeah. Is there a way to stop the flow? I uh, mumble. I don't know. Not really. <laughs> I don't know. Sure. Maybe, I, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, but shouldn't we? Oh, so, sorry. 
Yeah, so so we'll go back to the code. Yeah, let's let's yeah. try that. Sorry, we're looking. Uh, sorry, uh, we're looking at this one. Oh, yeah, you're right. It, I was not looking at that one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I I was all confused. That's not one. Okay, so so here it's this one. Okay, person three and person five, and then there's five and three, um, or person nine and sixteen, or sixteen and nine, oh, or twelve. Yeah. Okay. Three and five. Let's go three and five. Okay, they have to have the same, whatever it is, whatever province they're in has to be the same between them. That's province seven. Whatever age group it is, have to be the same between them, too. Mm -hmm. So there's only one age group between them, and there's only one province between them. And this is how we encode it. Okay. And and I know this may start to seem like thinking through all the details of what's going on. It takes time, but I hope you, you're starting to see there's actually kind of a method to this madness. It's like, this represents our query in a way. This represents what we want to see. And we say, go find this in this database. And it comes up for us a common province and a common age group. Almost the way we speak, we speak about it in English. They have to have a common province, a common age group, or they have one province between them, right? Like these things jive with it. It's it's kind of nice. Okay, now let's talk about the pups. Can we do that? Hearing no objections. Okay, now we prepare a pattern to find pairs of distinct people from the same province who also have service dogs. Okay, how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to say, in general, there can be two service dogs, okay? Um, there can be two people. I have, have two people. Um, they can have two different age groups between them. You don't want to constrain that. But they, there's only one province between them. The province is shared. So the age group is one, two. Age group, in general, can be different. Um, caregiver. Well, the province is one one because there's only that each person is the same province as the other. There's only one province between. And the caregiver here, what's the caregiver for? It's for the what? For the dogs. The dogs in general be mapped to a different per, per, per person. And so monic equals true. We actually really want, we really want the person to be mapped to the same. Oops. Or capital P. This means, by the way, it's kind of the symbol person. That's what the colon means. Symbol. Okay. Um, means interpret this as a symbol, and it's going to be able to find it there. The age groups needn't be the same. I mean, we needn't be different. I'm not going to insist that they're different. It's okay if they map to the same thing. That's okay. The dogs, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's possible for the dogs because the dogs have people. So it's not possible that the dogs are going to be the same. Um, but the age groups could be the same. So we're going to find this. Um, oh, wait, but Nona, what should we do? Show it. Show it. <laughs> okay. Nona learns well. Yes. Um, um do it. Okay. Um, elements of what? Of this thing here, right? Okay. And, and oh, 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 oh. What's the matter with this? Um, did I not execute it? Oh, here we go. Okay. Okay. What's going on? You tell me. What's that? They have dogs. They have dogs. <laughs> so they need to have dogs. In general, there's two different persons, right? There's in general, there's two different dogs here. Yeah. Um, but the person and the persons can have different age groups. We're not constraining that, but they've got to be from the same what? Province. Province. You see that? And now let's run our query. And here we find we find you know two different two, you know, once we consider ignore order. Two different pairs. So, so the first is 20 and 10. Um, let's go up. Let's go up to our database and check it out, right? Okay, first of all, are 20 and 10 from the same province? Yeah, they're both from province six. 
but do they both are they both caregivers to dogs right um yeah here they are in the dog table mm -hmm. so they have dogs they have dogs um or dogs have them um okay um the other two it said four and seven okay can we can we go look here Person four and seven, they better be in the in province. They're in the same province. And are four and seven both, do, do dogs have them as their caregivers? Yes, right? So we found, we found, we found these, these, uh, these dogs here. And basically, although I'm not, you know, time is short and I'm not gonna go over it again, for every one of these maps here, province, age group, caregiver, it has to have this consistent map here. This nat It matches this naturality. It has to have a consistent interpretation. So if person, person, this person is person four, this person is person seven, they have their respective dogs, their respective province, it all has to hang together that what we get in one in in the generic one the, the the one that we put as kind of the query if we give this if we if we consider this function here first and then map over to what like the province goes to it has to be the same as mapping over the person and then taking the province there right all those different homomorphisms, it finds this, this pattern. So, you know, we've been talking about graphs. We've been talking about dynamical systems. And we saw kind of how to think about their homomorphisms. We're finding a pattern, or embedding a pattern, or, or, or kind of locating it inside what's sometimes a bigger structure, right? Mm hmm? Mm hmm? Or finding where it, the different places it's kind of located in its specifics, right? Um, we we saw that for dynamical systems too, right? Um, where we have dynamical systems and we're we're kind of mapping in in dynamical systems, and we we saw that uh, here, right? Or where we have these mappings, we're kind of in a way where it can be that we're coarsening it up, but it can also be it just finds this in a bigger one. That's also a legitimate one. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes it can collapse it down. Just like here, we could have two people, but they share the same province, right? They, they don't have to have different provinces. We can kind of glom some things together. They have the same province, they have the same age or whatever. But it's the same basic gist here, but I know it, it may seem like different in its particulars and fair enough, but this idea of kind of homomorphisms here as queries, finding things um, that match this in a consistent way, in a fully consistent way, match our query. And then being able to display those queries visually per the nonarian imperative of visualizing it, this, there's something quite powerful here. And this is going to be at the heart of some of our ABM pattern finding, where we compose these kind of patterns for rewrite rules and say, when this situation applies, phrased kind of like this, when you have a person next to their dog, um, you know, do this, um, have them take their dog for a walk or something. That, that will be how we encode logic. For, for much of our discrete logic or rewriting logic, okay? Um, so this is, a, this is a different particular of, of homomorphism. Next time, we're gonna talk about primitive causal loop diagrams, and we're gonna find homomorphisms between causal loop diagrams as represented in kind of a, a primitive sort of way. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to find the ability to recognize one of these inside a null. Okay? Like find one pattern inside a bigger causal loop diagram.
Are we good with this? Okay, so that's for next time. Um, I think we will stop today. And, but I hope this is useful for sort of reinforcing some of these basic ideas of homomorphisms as kind of finding patterns. And you may, some of you may recall in my previous classes on more talking about basics of applied category theory, this notion of functors is finding one diagram in a category, like finding a, a, a map, a functor from category C to category D can be viewed as kind of finding a pattern in that category or embedding a pattern and so sort of finding it in context, you know, placing it in context or what have you. And some of those threads are coming in here. Are we good with this? Okay. I think we're good? Okay. I think we'll go quickly over the causal loop diagram next time so we can get on to the subject of your take home exercise, which is categorical algebra products, co products. Okay. Okay. Great.